Authoring a policy with semantic data loss prevention 14.0. The policy creation portion of the software is performed through the Enforce console. Here you can see a view into my test environment, which contains many of our predefined policies that are included out of the box with the software. You can additionally add your own custom policies through the Add Policy dialog. When creating a custom policy, it can either be done from a blank policy, or you can choose to add a policy based off of known templates that we have with the software. For the purposes of today's demonstration, we'll look at a predefined policy for United States Social Security numbers. So we select the U.S. Social Security number template, click Next. This will now bring us to the policy configuration creation window, where we can begin to note a few key things. One, each policy is given a unique name, and you have the ability to add a customized description for that. Additionally, policies can be put into policy groups. We'll put this one into a personally identifiable information group. Next are the three tabs that compose the policy, starting with detection, groups, and response. Detection is the combination of rules and or exceptions that are going to define out the key data identifiers that the DLP software is looking for within your environment. In this instance, we have a US SSN. Here we see the dialog box for a US SSN. Note things like severity. Severity allows us to determine the value of the data that we're looking at within this policy on a scale of informational to high severity. This allows you to assign dedicated values to the data set depending on business need. Next, we'll look at the conditions for match. And this is our informational dialog box that tells us how we're going to determine a social security number and match upon that, whether using the data at rest capabilities or the data in motion capabilities within the Symantec DLP software. We start by defining out a nine-digit sequence of numbers and adding in any additional separators through regular expression. We can see here that this gives us a very wide range of detection, but also allows us to do things like eliminate common test numbers or known strings of numbers that are not used by the U.S. Social Security Department. When authoring your own policies or modifying our default pre-canned built-in policies, you also have the ability to do things like require or exclude beginning characters and ending characters, as well as add in the presence of keywords that relate to that data set. In the instance of a social security number, we could add things like SSN or SS pound, for instance. This allows us to produce optional validators to make sure that we're not creating a lot of false positives or increasing the signal to noise ratio within the data identifiers in our reporting. Additional factors and variables that can go into policies are determining where we're going to match on for things like the subject body, envelope, or any attachments inside of an email, et cetera. Once we have a fully configured policy, it'll look like this within the console. Here you can see that I've created a very large range of detections for everything from United States Social Security numbers all the way down to Chilean national identification numbers. This allows me to have one policy that's able to identify several different types of personally identifiable information when performing DLP detections. Additionally, in the policy configuration tabs, we can leverage the groups option. Groups is a combination of things like Active Directory or LDAP users or groups, IP addresses, or domain names that we want these policies to apply to or not apply to via combinations of rules and exceptions. The final tab within here is our response section. Response is where we go through and assign out the responses we want DLP to have if it does detect one of these data identifiers, either as part of the data at rest capability or the data in motion capability. You'll see several pre-populated inside of this policy, and in the next video we'll go deep into depth on what the configuration of those looks like 